Good morning to everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you to the first session of this year's RTR conference on the Green Vehicle Initiative uh, projects. My name is Tilo Bein. I'm going to moderate the session Green Vehicles Virtual Product Development and Production of Electrified Vehicles. We will have four uh, projects which will be presented and discussed afterwards. The procedure is as follow. Uh, we will introduce first the speaker, then see the video of the uh, projects. And if you have a question, please use the conversation function of this conference tool. Uh, at the end, we will have a, a Q&A session of about 10 minutes where we go through your question and where the speaker, which will be live uh, for the Q&A session, will try to answer. At the beginning, I would like to pass the work, uh, word to Eric Garnias from uh, INEA. Um, please, Eric, um, the floor is yours. OK. <clears throat> Thank you, Tilo. And good morning to all the participants to this session. Uh, welcome to you uh, from my side. So my name is Eric Cernias. I'm project officer at INEA, so the Innovation Networks Executive Agency of the European Commission. Um, I'm going to spend just some words about the, the session to introduce uh, this to you. Um, so as part of the session, we are going to hear about the results achieved so far by four projects, which are Panda, Upscale, Vision XCV and uh, Xil 4 v the topic is very interesting. I think what is also interesting here is the fact that these four projects that I've just mentioned are four competing projects in the sense they, that they all belong to the same call. Uh, it's a green vehicle call from 2018. Therefore, uh, they share the same challenge. And basically the challenge is to capitalize, so to use uh, at their best the advances made in the field of um, digitization slash digitalization, in particular in uh, with respect to the virtual product development and production, to reduce the time to market of all types of electric vehicles. And it should be done at a uh, lower cost. Um, what do we expect <laughs> as European Commission from this project? Well, well the, the main uh, expected outcome or impact is that each project uh, through uh, the digital integration of design with uh, manufacturing and uh, supply chain should demonstrate that with the solutions that they are developing, they will be, uh, they will achieve a substantial reduction of lead time and time to market for all types of electrified vehicles. So we're not talking here about uh, simulation time or design time only. We are talking here about lead time and time to market for the entire vehicle. And this should be done uh, with consistent and or improved quality. Um, projects should also achieve at minimized cost and increase uh, development efficiency for multi-power platform, uh, despite the fact that as we know, uh, the, the, there is an increased complexity of this platform. And then, uh, more in general, they should support an accelerated uptake of innovation, uh, leading, of course, to an increased market penetration of these kind of vehicles. They should support the circular economy. Uh, they should support also an improved integration of suppliers, SMEs, and research. So the, this is a brief introduction. We are now going to hear about these four projects, what they have been able to achieve so far. Um, maybe before I pass the floor back to Tilo and to the project, maybe just one thing to keep in mind is that this project has just, start, has just started. They started two years ago, um, so they are still ongoing and they will end at the end of next year. Apart from an upscale that will end up a little bit later in 2020. Um, into 22, yes, sorry. Okay, so this is all from my side as a very brief introduction on uh, of what we are going to hear during the next, uh, during the session. And, uh, and, and of course, as Tilo said, there will be discussion later on. 
So Tilo, okay. the floor is back to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Eric, uh, for setting the scene. Um, we will start with the first project named Panda. Much also to Christoph Lehne. We have now seen the four presentation of the project Panda, Upscale, Vision X EV, and XL for EV. I would like to ask now the presenter to go online and turn on your microphone and your camera and so that we can have the Q&A session. We are a little bit ahead of time, so we have plenty of time to go through the question which has been submitted via the chat function. Let me introduce first, once again, the different presenter because there was a, um, uh, let's say, uh, not a correct presentation by myself. So the Panda project was presented by um, by Alan Buscayarol. He is professor at the University of Lille. You see him at least on my side to the top right. Uh, the second speaker was Enric Aramburu. He is senior engineer at Idiada. Uh, a plus uh, near Barcelona. Third project, Vision XCV, was presented by Rainer Tatschner from ABL, a long time uh, research engineer developer, uh, senior research developer at uh, ABL. And the last presentation was given by Christoph Lehner from the Technical University. Now he's a PhD student in the division of the uh, chassis systems. Um, so the procedure will as follow. I will go through the chat function and will uh, uh, address uh, the questions and, and pass the word then to the presenter. Um, the first question directly comes from my side uh, to uh, Ellen, um, Panda project. You're talking about uh, cloud simulation um, and co-simulation via the cloud. What the security and confidentiality issues are you experience, particularly if you're uh, collaborating with the industry, which is a quite sensitive topic. Yes, uh, thanks for the question. It's true that the IP is a, a very sensitive issue. Uh, what we are developing is uh, two kind of models. Uh, we have uh, uh, open models that can be shared by all the partners, but we have also open what we call the black box models. That means that input and output are strictly the same to be interconnected to all the other component, uh, but uh, it's a black box. That means that uh, a supplier can play with the cloud, bring his own new technology with a black box model in order to demonstrate the interest or not uh, of uh, his component. So we are working on, on this possibility in order to, to secure uh, the IP of uh, the potential uh, player with uh, this kind of models. Thank you very much, Ellen. Another question in your direction. Um, you have seen also the presentation by uh, Christoph. Uh, are you also considering hardware in the loop testing via the cloud and then also linking the different uh, physical test rigs which are available at your partner sites? Yes, we, we hope that uh, we, we can start uh, to have first result on that. It shows that uh, XEL for EV is uh, more focused on that and we have uh, uh, we hope to start some collaboration to have uh, cooperation on that point. Uh, it's not the core of our project, but uh, uh, we hope that the cloud uh, we developed could be a solution in order to, to bring uh, some new idea on the topic. Okay, thank you very much. The next question goes to Enric, uh, to the Upscale project. I hope he's still present. Um, there was a question in the chat uh, on the trustworthiness of your methodology. Um, can you briefly address uh, how you tackle the problems of the trustworthiness of your your models Tilo, this is eric uh, yeah. speaking 
actually the, in the chat box there is a message from Enric saying that he's struggling to activate camera and and, uh, and the oh. mic. Okay, then we will postpone the question and move on um, to uh, a question to Vision XAV. There was a similar question then to to Reinhard um, on the limitation of the scalability methods for the modeling of the subsystems, um, particularly if you have uh, non linearities how are you tackling this issue? Reinhard. Yeah, so I, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. yeah, thank you for this question. Um, well, the, the, the keyword scalability has, uh, has got uh, several dimensions in, in the view of the Vision XCV project. So we have uh, one dimension is the or one aspect is the, the 3D to, to 1D uh, conversion in, in order to, to um, enable the, the usage of, of high fidelity uh, 3D multiphysics simulation results to um, parameterize 0D, 1D models and, and hence to, to to raise the, the predictive accuracy on, on one side and in order to um, uh, reduce the, the uh, dependence on experimental input on, on the other side. Um, so this 3D to uh, 1D uh, scalability, this um, uh, brings, uh, um, brings us uh, in increased um, uh, accuracy, reduced um, parameterization effort by fully maintaining the non-linearity of the multiphysical system. So if we, for instance, look on a, on a battery, uh, the, the uh, electrical, thermal, and heat transfer fluid flow effects are, are fully carried over from the 3D to the 1D side. There's a second aspect of scalability. Um, when uh, when um, uh, only looking on the on the system level um, aspect and system level simulation, um, there the the scalability um, can be can be seen in in the sense of uh, is it uh, required or necessary to to resolve the the battery system uh, down to a cell level. Um, really individually in solving all the in, in, uh, or resolving into all the, the individual battery cells that form a module or a pack? Um, or is it sufficient to, to, to uh, look at the, 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 the um, task on a, on a module level or even on a pack level? So all these three different um, scales are covered by the Vision XCD project and uh, the application or ap applicability of this different um, methods uh, depends on where you are in the development process. So in the, in the early concept phase, a, a, lump, uh, a lump approach looking at the pack in, it, in its entirety might be sufficient. Uh, further down the development process, uh, it might be required to to refine further down to module and even uh, on onto a cell level. Okay. So in, in any case, non-linearities are, are also fully accounted for as long as we are on a on uh, rely on physical modeling, and that that's the the the, the focus of the Vision XCV project to be as physical as possible. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Reinhard. Um, question from my side. Um, you de developed uh, quite a lot of uh, models, and now you are tackling the issue of bringing them together in, uh, in a system simulation approach. Um, what requirements do you need for the functional mockups uh, for the FMU? And you also refer to FMU standards. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on those? Um, yeah, as you as you say, we we are uh, we are relying on on uh, on FM FMU standards, and uh, when when coupling the individual models uh, together, uh, a key aspect is that in in many in many applications we have to deal with different uh, time scales and length scales. So specifically, the time scales are numerically challenging and and demanding. 
um, and uh, the, it's the the um, uh, the goal in, in Vision XCV to to establish a, a, a coupling and co-simulation um, framework that fully supports the 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 different lengths or or time especially time scales of the physical processes by avoiding that the the processes with the with the smallest time scales that they numerically determine the overall um, uh, performance of the simulation system yeah? so the 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 idea is to to fully support uh, the having the individual scales of the subsystems fully resolved maintained and uh, establish a coupling uh, that that still ensures um, high performance and if possible even real time or faster than real time performance by fully uh, utilizing the and and adopting the fmi standards okay thanks a lot Reinhard. then we go on to vision uh, to xil uh, for electric vehicle um, Christoph, there were two questions directly to you. I start with the first one um, about the latency within your networks. You are using FMI protocols, gateways, and uh, VPNs. Um, what is the total latency you can you experience and you can handle? And what happened if you lose the connection? Uh, what is the strategy to reconnect and to to continue with the testing? Okay. Good morning. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Um, thanks for the question. Um, regarding the delay, so first let's say we have our project divided the tasks into two halves. So performing the real simulations will uh, take place in the next year. So all preparations are done and we have also done some pre-testing. So we experience pure network delays for um, e.g. between Ilmenau and Ljubljana between 20 and 30 milliseconds. And for the whole setup, we are around um, below 80 milliseconds um, in total latency. Um, regarding the question um, for fail behavior, there we have to think about fail safe and also fail tolerance. So is a test run, a simulation still valid? If there have some, if there was a short connection issue or something, then we talk about fail tolerant platforms or um, fail safe if it's just our aim to uh, ensure that the test tricks uh, shut down safely yes okay um, therefore there are prepared fallback models so the test tricks receive some data um, that is valid so that um, there aren't any issues for the test tricks uh, for the hardware itself also we can use um, some predicting systems um, model-based predictive systems that can uh, predict for some period of time um, some values so that the test tricks can still run on or shut down safely. Okay, thanks Christoph. There is a second question um, about the uh, reduction for emissions. Uh, if you consider those also in your optimization um, and what are the trade-offs uh, you are expecting? Yes, thank you for that question. Um, I think uh, Maurizio meant this question regarding break planning control or overall of the uh, methodology. So I'm going to answer both of them. Yeah. So um, for break planning control, um, yes. So of course, um, the better energy balance uh, can be achieved and also a uh, break wear reduction. So if we uh, optimize our break blending control strategy, uh, we have uh, we can reduce the break wear, of course, and uh, also save energy and uh, extend the driving driving range of the car, of course. Um, for the overall uh, 
methodology, we see um, the factors reduction in travel and also reduction in uh, transport. Um, yeah, through the remote platform sharing um, concepts um, that can be achieved. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I see that uh, Enric is still not online, so he's answering your question in the chat function. But we have uh, two more questions uh, to all of the presenters. One is coming from Eric. Um, he is interesting uh, how you plan to integrate design with manufacturing supply chain. Do you have a strategy on this? Maybe we can start with Alan. Um, what are your plan to uh, integrate them the design with manufacturing and the supply chain? Yes, thanks. It's sure that it's a difficult question. Uh, but anyway, last week we have a specific uh, meeting within Panda uh, proposed by Rono Group in order to better know what is the global process of developing a new vehicles. Uh, it's a very complex uh, uh, process, including supply chain and so on, uh, contact of supplier at the right time in order to test the, the different components and uh, we would like to identify where are located the, the simulation tasks in this complex uh, process and uh, then uh, what could be the, the benefit of uh, new simulation tools uh, to uh, develop fastly some, some steps and globally uh, the time to market but it is a, a very uh, challenging task but uh, when we discuss with uh, our industrial partners, there are also uh, other challenges because uh, there are uh, many different software that has been used in this kind of process. And it will be difficult to uh, convince people to change for a new method because we are developing the four projected disruptive method. So how to, to convince people how to demonstrate the interest. The first uh, point is that, and another challenge is that, uh, uh, what is the cost of changing? Because a company maybe will decide to change, but it will depend on the cost globally. So we are trying to address uh, these uh, global points. Okay, thanks a lot. And then the same question to Reinhard. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, as um, uh, as uh, the um, the Vision XUV project is mainly active in the in on the left uh, side of the of the V process, um, our supply supply chain or our focus regarding supply is mainly on the on on the the engineering and research supply chain, and. Uh, yeah, and there, there we see the the Vision XCV project as being a, 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 of of providing a, a strong basis for for integrating the different contributions from the the engineering and research suppliers uh, in the development process. So the we have a a, a large number of of uh, leading universities, uh, part uh, university partners uh, in, included uh, or. Um, uh, as partners in the project, and that are already strongly uh, acting and cooperating with the with the with the industry, and uh, it um, uh, Vision actually will strongly contribute to to enabling a, a, a seamless exchange of models between the partners and to enable co-simulation of, of models from different um, engineering um, suppliers uh, um, in, in SM, SM, um, uh, SFM, FMUs, but also um, models um, uh, as, uh, provided as open models. So that uh, depending on the requirements related to um, IP issues, and depending on whether models can be provided in an open form or in a in an in an encapsulated uh, way, um, both or different modes of of model exchange are are possible. Regarding the manufacturing, so the the um, 
the uh, still staying on the on the on the on the on the on the, on the left side of the of the deep process, the the uh, vision XCD models and methods are are aimed at at being um, let's say um, of supporting the different uh, phases in the development process from from concept and pre and to pre development and and even even a bit further and uh, by by being um, uh, easily upgraded and, and updated as soon as more detailed information on the individual components and subsystems is available so let me give me an example so once the first hardware parts are available and are going to be tested then it's uh, quite frequent that um, that certain behavior can be observed on the test bed that that is not easily explainable uh, what the 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 reasons are why why a specific behavior is is observed and uh, and here the 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 models can can um, uh, contribute uh, can contribute in in also in in this phase when first hardware is available can contribute to, to um, providing answers to the questions, providing a more detailed insight and, and to, um, enable to explain why part subsystems behave specifically on the test bed and can hand, contribute to provide a more clear and, and targeted feedback to the, to the um, manufacturer of the individual component or subsystem. So that's where we see the link uh, to the supply chain and, and, and also to the manufacturing part. Okay, thank you very much, Rainer, for the detailed elaboration. And now the same question to uh, Xil for EV to Christoph Lehne. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, of course, uh, the reduction in lead time is very hard to demonstrate or to measure. So, we focus on um, the aim that we can uh, use hardware and loop, loop test setups earlier in the development process. And we can do this re um, using new business cases or new market um, that the concept allows, meaning that we can create uh, business cases of test bench sharing. So we have prepared and remotely shared test benches that uh, can be easily um, interacted um, and working uh, early in the development process. So or, or let's say seamless usage of these test benches in the development process. And this allows us to um, reduce the effort in time and also uh, also in costs. Yeah. Um, thanks a lot, Christoph. So uh, one final quick question uh, to all of you, and maybe we start backwards since you already indicated. Um, you partly answered it, um, but what is your strategy to somehow quantify uh, the reduction lead time uh, to the market? You said it's, it's very difficult. I fully agree with that. But somehow you, at the end of the project, you have to show how the development time and the lead time to market has been reduced. What is your strategy for your project, Christoph? Okay, so this question or uh, the answer to these questions can only work with our together with our industrial partners, of course. So they have the experience of the um, lead time um, before using these concepts that are developed because use, before using um, these uh, hardware in the loop remote shared test setups, and um, so they can compare um their effort um through uh or in the development process okay it's a benchmarking with a current yes, state of yes. okay uh, reinhard the question to you with a uh, please be short we only have four minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, the, the overall concept is very similar like uh, in 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 uh, xil for ev so we have uh, 
four use cases that are defined uh, and specified by the industrial partners. And based on these cases, um, the, the, the impact uh, and the progress, the outcome of the Vision XEV project um, will be demonstrated and, and assessed uh, comparing uh, um, the traditional development process, development activities uh, compared with the um, development methodology that is enabled by the outcome of the Vision XEV project. Okay. Thanks. And now, finally, the last word goes to you, Ellen. <laughs> you started the session, you will end the session. <laughs> so uh, I would like uh, to, to mention that uh, uh, the four project has uh, some starting common action. Uh, we do a, a common workshop uh, last week in uh, the international conference in order to, to share our first experience. It was IEEE VPPC, Vehicle Power Propulsion. And what is interesting is that uh, uh, when we look at uh, the, the W models, we are working on different uh, axes, and uh, it is uh, really an interest to couple what we are developing. So I hope that uh, we will uh, go in this uh, direction in future action. Okay, thanks a lot, Alan. So we are coming to an end. I would like to thank all four speakers once again for the presentation and for uh, answering the questions uh, from the chat. Uh, I highly appreciate your, your effort. Um, despite the small technical problems, I think the session went quite well. And according to my knowledge, the session has been recorded and will be available for uh, future views. Uh, we had about, uh, in the peak time, uh, more than 100 participants, which is uh, quite a success. Uh, for most of the presentation, we were about 95 um, participants, which is uh, really good for such an uh, online event. Um, I will go now close the session. I wish you a good remaining conference. Uh, enjoy the other presentation in the other sessions. and. Um, Stay healthy. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.